Welcome to Indie Resources 11th video on how to build a browser based MMO version 2.0. Saws of Ahala. Um, been a while since the video, and so I was a little bit rusty on the code and everything, so I had to kind of go back through it. I will finish this um, this series, I promise you guys that. I got another series I'm coming out with that's going to be a, um, a node based one, kind of a real time thing, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so I did a lot on this video and it's going to be a lot to go over. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it actually gets us to the point where we can really start kicking out some cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get into this. Um, logging in, you'll notice that the screen looks a little different. It's now kind of centered and we've got the compass here and everything. And the reason why is that we were having, I was having a lot of difficulties with uh, people asking me about, well, how can I do this and how can I do this? Because it doesn't look right on my screen the way it looks on yours. So I made it this way to where it looks the same and I took the compass because it was wasting space over here, I kind of put it on the on the uh, map, and everybody was asking about, well, my compass is kind of m misbalanced. How do I fix it? So I made it to where it's real simple for everybody. So to, let's let's get into this. Let's start with, um, well, the second piece I did to this was now whenever you move, the it actually is based off of the player. So let's um, so see how these three rocks and this is around me. If I log out and log back in, I should be in the exact same place I left off of it, which I am. So, and that's because it's now based off the actual player in the database. So we kind of connected all that together and those were the main fundamentals I wanted to get done to where now we can start adding some, some cool stuff. So let's talk about what we did. Number one thing we did, if you go to your index, um, in Bootstrap, I removed, if you enter your body tag, I removed the fluid. That's what makes it go full page. Brought it down to the center to where we can all be looking kind of at the same screen. Looking at the compass, um, I got rid of all the rows and columns and things like that and basically made a I call it a map canvas, which just surrounds the map and the compass. And then under compass, I changed everything to just divs with some, with just the icons. And if you go to your style, you'll see here that I got some styles going on. And all I did was made position absolute, and then I did left, right, and kind of positioned them that way. This way, if you guys want to change something, for instance, if you want your arrow in a really goofy place, your bottom arrow, you can actually put it there. You can kind of decide where they want to go. I figured that would help everybody out on that stuff. Um, so that's really what I did with the CSS as far as that goes. That's about it. But it does seem to work better and we got some space over here we can still use to, to put all our stats and we got some space down here so we've still got plenty of room. Um, plus we can shrink this stinking this thing up here. It's huge. We'll do that later in a, in a later video. So let's talk about what we did to make the player now um, link up with everything. It's going to be kind of long-winded because there's a lot to it. So the first thing we do when we log in is we do, um, let's look at our user login we actually uh, send over through through via Ajax the username and password. So when we go to validation, we've already talked about this, you'll notice it checks for it. Um, and basically it looks for it, if it finds it, it creates a session, and done. The, but what the, the thing that's different though is under your index you now have, and before anybody goes crazy and says, oh wait, we can build this, we can do this a different way, or let's create it in a new file. I did this because of ease of use. This is much easier to to explain right now and before we get too deep like I do in all my videos it's much easier to start out slow and then kind of get more advanced. For now this what I'm going to call a class, this player class is basically built right here as a kind of a global <coughs> for now and it's got these um, properties in it name, zone, uh, your map, all that. It starts out at blank right now because there's no need for it because the first thing it's going to do is we're going to check our session and if nobody's logged in it's going to log in um, so let's let's go from there. So it sends back everything it finds in here, and I, we're going to eventually send back more stuff, but for now. And then it goes back to our user login, and if you notice, it goes ahead and, and defines the, those JavaScript variables. So the player.class, player.name, player blah blah blah. So basically, we now have it, as soon as you log in, it sets that stuff up and gets ready for it. Now let's say that you refresh, or when you first get on the page, it does the check session, and here's what I here's what is kind of important to remember. You want everything done on the server side. Anything done on the client side can be manipulated, and players can start cheating. So I'm making this game much like other games to where everything's done on the server, to where it's a lot less chance of manipula manipulation. How I'm going to do that is with sessions, like I always do. <coughs> yes, there are better ways of doing this, but the terms of this tutorial and how we're making this game, it's going to be sessions. Um, when we first log in, we create the session. After that. We always look for that session, and then we that session is our player ID. That way, anytime we do anything, we always check that ID. It ends up going back and building everything off of that ID on the server and the repassing. And I'll explain it a little better than that. So, it checks for the session. If the session exists, 
it then look where the where the ID equals the session ID. We're not passing anything to this. It's getting it off the server. That way it can't be manipulated. It's going to resend all this information back over. So that way anytime we have to do anything, we want to resend that information back over to make sure that the player hasn't cheated, that no one's been manipulating and things like that. Once it finds that information, it then um, this is eventually going to be removed. I put this in here just for now, but we don't technically need this, but we'll talk about it later. But anyway, what we're doing is we're repassing, um, we're repassing all the data back. So if we go to um, our back to user, user login on check session, it's also doing the same thing. It's redefining all those things and sending them back to that variable. That way. Anytime they refresh, anytime they log in, it's brand new fresh data that's been com that's, that came from the server. So now that we kind of understand that, and what it's doing is it's building the page after each one of them. So we're building the map after both of them. Now let's talk about, well, how do we travel? How do we change that? If you go to your index, you'll notice that in those icons, we are calling on a JavaScript, uh, a JavaScript function called travel, which we've already talked about. And in our travel under player.js, you see I changed some things. Basically, it's going to call to the server and say, hey, I'm moving. Um, so we need to go to our travel.php, and we start our sessions again. If you notice, I didn't pass any player information over when I did this, when I'm traveling. Other, The only thing I passed was the direction they were going, because who cares if they manipulate that? That's just like clicking on a button. If they say they want to go north and they manipulate it and go south, what does it matter? They go south, it's just like clicking the south button, so it doesn't really matter. What I do, though is I grab this ID from the session, that way I'm not asking the client for anything. I could care less what the client thinks. The client's just there to be a window for us. <clears throat> um, once we get it, we we grab our the current player, the player's current zone map R and map C, then we look at the direction they clicked, and then we change it, and then we update the data the player's database to, to change it. So if they wanted to go north, they would um, it'd be you know map R minus one or so that way it updates it and then it comes back now I had a big issue before I had to stop the video because I was like why isn't this working it's because I didn't send anything back Ajax likes to before it can get an success it needs to see something successfully happen it needs to receive that thing so I'm just sending a one back to say hey it's something happened and if you go to back to um, your player you'll notice that on that success, on that seeing something return because if you don't send anything back it doesn't know that anything happened it's going to go to get map um, under our map.js, our git map, it's going to then, let me get rid of this console.log, it's then going to git map, if you go to git map, it's then going to um, start, it's then going to requery everything based off that session. So I kept those separate because there's many times we want to use that without using the other. So when we travel, we're going to update the database and say we moved, and then we're going to go back and get the database of, of where we moved. This helps keep cheating down, things like that, because it's two different functions, two different things are happening, and it's all happening on the server. We're, we're only getting it off the server. So basically, this just goes in. Uh, wherever we moved, it grabs it just like before, sends it back to the, the map, which I guess I need to save, and then it builds the map, and then everything builds again. So I hope I didn't confuse you guys. It's pretty simplistic stuff. It's basically just um, linking the player up to now to where it grabs its data every time. It's, everything's happening on the server. And now, now we can actually, we're not just speeding at numbers, we're actually moving and it's based off of where the player is moving. So everything looks like it's working really, really good.